It's Thick Rick and Lewis from the Morning Blitz here at Sonic Temple 2024 with Bobby from Saliva. And I, you know, I was like, I knew what I was going to ask you first. And then you walk in with your daughter, Veda. And I didn't know she was going to sit down with us, but you said, no, nah, no, nah, she's, she's surpassing me. She's going way above. She just, she just signed a <laughs> deal with Sony. And I'm like, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> right. What? Man, she's still, she's 12, so she's at that <laughs> age where like, she walks into a room full of people and she's like look, roaming around like, okay, who am I going to see here? All right. Right. Who, who, Where's the famous musicians at? You know, that, that's it. I mean, how proud are you? Oh, very, man. She's she's she put in the hard work though. She's yeah? been working hard for, you know, a, a year and a half straight. You know, uh, since she was like 10, 11, You know, and, that's and amazing. She's, yeah. So she's a singer. And she said it's like pop rock. And yeah, yeah, that's it, cool it, though, it's man. A little bit for everybody. She, you know, we we worked with some some good uh, you know a good producer Howard Benson for yeah, her. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And. Um, you know, had, had some really great songs come together, and, and we're all just really stoked. For all that. right, well, yeah. I can't I can't wait to hear it. All right, okay, well, let's talk about saliva now. Oh, you yeah. just you hit me with that, and I'm like, she's 12. Look at this. this yeah. is, it's in the blood. She sang with us today. Did yeah. she really? Yeah, she came on stage. Oh, she I missed that. It. Oh no. Yeah. That's the thing. People always like my friends. Like I've gotten so many like random dude. You're at that show. How great is it? I'm like, I've seen about 30 minutes of four. Yeah, I've been you guys back here all day. All day, yeah. All day, yeah. yeah I get it, and man. it's cool, though, because we get to catch up with you guys. But I, did get to, I, I did get to hear click, click, boom. So yeah, cool. I was happy about that. You guys, do you, you guys do were you guys on fire. Do you guys get to see the headliners and stuff usually? Uh, it's, yeah, it depends. It just depends on the, uh, like, for us, like, on Thursday night, I'm like, all right, I've reached that point where if I stop now, I can get home because my alarm is going to go off at 5 a.m., whether I want it to or not. So I can get that point where I can go. Or I can stay longer, and it's going to be hell to pay in about eight hours. Right. So no, I, I'm I've, I saw Mudvayne, I saw Falling in Reverse, I saw Pantera fucking oh, kill it last yeah, night. Yeah. So I saw a little bit of Disturbed, I saw a little bit of Evanescence, saw some of Falling in Reverse, saw some of um, Mudvayne the other night. Who do you watch? Do you watch any bands? While uh, you're here? Well, today no, but because um, we got we just got in this morning because oh, we're okay. on a tour. But, All right. but at Rockville. We did the pre-party last week on Wednesday night. Okay. So we, we camped out in the bus overnight, and um, and Veda was there, and we, and we got to watch. Uh, we got to ha- dude. She got to go hang out with Skillet on their bus. <laughs> and I leave nice. like and Lacey was there, so we got to watch like them on stage. Yeah. And then you know I, I love Limp Bizkit, and like oh the, yeah. you know took them Friday night. My, my son's sixteen and. And her, we went back and watched Slim Biscuit. It was cool. So, uh, will you get to see him tonight, or you got to get yeah. out of here? Yeah, oh, yeah, you will yeah, get, yeah. oh, yeah. get to stick around, yep. Slipknot, everything. Yep. Oh, that's uh, awesome. We're, we're here, so um, didn't get a chance to see any bands today, but we saw some at Rockville. It was really cool. Is this is this hotter than Rockville today? No, Rockville was like 95 degrees right, for us. All right. Well, we've Thursday, had some. Yeah. I, I guess depending today on which was day hot. you played. Today was hot. Though. All right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there were a couple of bands that said today was hotter than Rockville, but I guess then we had uh, when we had a day to remember in here, they were like, no. The day we played at Rockville was insanely hot, so it just depends. I guess it depends on the day. Well, yeah. yeah. So when we played Thursday at Rockville, that was really hot. It hadn't rained, and then it rained. I think like Friday a little bit, and Saturday and cooled down. Yeah. Plush said the girl from Plush said uh, we brought in the cold front. Is right. what yeah. She, that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Because it was like 95 degrees on when we played. Now, it was crazy. You guys have been at this for a while. Do you like doing the festival shows? Are you cool? Like when you see that whole lineup, are you like, dude, it's cool? Dude. It's like the cherry on top. I don't even care if we play at 11 a.m. or whatever. It's it's being a part of the festival, I think, is important. Yeah. Especially, like, you know, I've been in the band now. I'm in my 13th year. And, and I think all we ever set out to do was try to rebrand, make the band relevant, yeah. and, and, and stay in the relevant front, you know. And um, it's been a grind, man, this whole time. But I think that's rock, what rock and roll is. I mean, if you ever... You, you know, does a ba- any band ever go, oh, man, here we are on top of the mountain, you know, because you can fall right out off of it just as quickly. Yeah. Um, but I, I love doing the clubs as well because I feel like you have to grind and you got you really got to win those people over. And when you get to these kind of shows, that's like the icing on the cake, man. That, that, makes, it, that makes it all worth it, you know. So. Oh, and you got, you got so many different fans at a festival. Uh, I, I, I'm a lot of them ha- who haven't seen saliva before, right, or exactly. like, or you know, have been reading in the press or whatever. But you know, I always feel like, see, you know, come see the band live, and and that that's where I, I feel my strongest is on stage. You know, and, uh, I'm a floor guy. I love pits and all yeah, of that. Yeah. And I mean, I did, how does that when you see pits? I, yeah, I always great. like to know. Is it does well, that just like give you make your hair stand up? Or? Yeah, because people are having a good time. I like seeing pits where people are actually 
um, enjoying themselves. Yes. And they're able to, like, help each other out. And, and, and you know, the crowd surfers, everyone's taking care of each yeah, other. Yeah, and stuff. yeah. There's, and, ro- there's rules. Yeah. There are rules. When yeah. somebody falls, you pick them up. Right. You know, I'll tell you, last night, Pantera, I mean, they were. It was, some of those pits were brutal. I mean, guys wearing football mouthpieces. I'm like, oh, you're, yeah, you're yeah, here yeah, for yeah. something I'm not here for. That, that's a, <laughs> that's an old school Phil and Selmo thing. When when he was, um, you know, doing doing his other bands and stuff, Super Joint Ritual. Right. Um, I saw them in Jacksonville at Freebird Live uh, this years ago, and the whole floor was wearing mouthpieces. That's oh, crazy, yeah. man. I'm like, I'm not trying to play football. That's the first right. time I'd ever seen that. <laughs> yeah, it's nuts. Now, What's it like for you guys? Because, you know, Saliva is known for several songs which could probably be considered an anthem. But right. when Click, Click, Boom starts, what's that like when you know the, you know the crowd is just going to react a certain way? What's that like when you just feel it happen or see it happen? Dude, you know, I, I got to give, I, I give props and respect to the guys that made that song, yeah. what, it, what it was. And, and at the time, that was just such a fun time for rock music yes. in the early 2000s, late 90s, you know, and I think, um, you know, it's back when movies were like, soundtracks were cool. Yeah, and like, man. So that, that song got in a lot of movies and, and also, you know, I, you know, I'm a season ticket holder with, with the Jaguars and I, um, you know, I hear it every time. Every time I'm at a game, you hear it and, and I think that's, that's a really cool feeling to be, to be part of that, the brand that's, that's, that's doing that, but like today, watching the crowd react to it, it's our last song, and I tell them before we play, I'm like, look, you know, how many people were born before the year 2001? How many of you remember OzFest and like how cool it was back then? Yeah. This is just as cool because everybody comes together. Doesn't matter what you who you vote for, right. what politics you're into, it, you're it, all here it, for rock out. and roll, and music yeah. unites people, and I think that that's the greatest thing the greatest thing on earth is, is is the way music can affect people and bring people together. We and that song in, in particular yeah. is like... It's iconic. Yeah. yeah. It, well, and, and you just see the crowd just jumping. Yeah. That's great. We were talking about with a couple of other bands how the rock space uh, is so strong right now because you have all these new bands that are coming out and they're coming onto the scene and they're bringing with them this whole new fan base that is now starting to discover some of these bands like you guys who yep. have been here for a minute. Right. And you've got this space now that's filled with a great, healthy selection of new bands, but you've also got some of the veterans out there that are still making some strong music, that, and they've got a catalog to fall back on that yeah. people are eating up at shows and stuff like that. And it's just rock feels healthier than it has been in quite some time. Yeah, well, also, you know, it's it's that whole um, full circle, like the, the you know early 2000s. Now here we are 20-plus years later. And like all those parents had kids, yeah. and now their kids are finally coming to these shows. Like you know, there's you know how many kids want to see Limp Biscuit and Slipknot. Oh yeah, I mean that's that's what I'm saying, dude. And the parents are like, I saw them 20 years ago, you know, so that was my jam then. And uh, my 14 year old niece is here now to see Limp Biscuit. That's what I'm saying. 14 my years kids old. Too. My kids love that stuff, uh, man. I you you just kind of I've been sitting here waiting to come back to it because I can't believe you didn't say anything. You brought up being a season ticket holder to the Jaguars. Now all I want to do is talk about football. Oh, yeah. Both of us are huge football junkies. I could junkies. Talk football all day. Oh, dude, so what do you expect out of them this year? Can I ask that? Ah, uh, realistic. Well, I, I think the schedule looks pretty easy for them because they're playing a lot of new quarterbacks, right. rookie quarterbacks, teams that don't really yeah. know what they're doing yet. You like Lawrence? I, I do. I'm not 100% sold on him yet. Right. But, you know, it's. I feel like – we as fans have been making excuses for him a little bit. Like the first okay. year was weird right. with you know Urban Meyer. Well, number pass one pick, you know, yeah, yeah, right. Pass so the first year, right. And th- but then you know how he turned the team around yeah. uh, in year two and went yeah. to the playoffs, the comeback against the Chargers. Yeah. I was like, I dude, know. we're going to be great next year. <laughs> we're eight and three last year, yeah. and then we it just, just nose dove. Like, yeah, it was crazy. And and I'm like, okay, maybe injuries really do impact that, but. I'm a believer in the quarterback puts the team on their shoulders and makes yep. it happen somehow. Uh, Houston is they are they're scary. Loaded. Yeah, they're scary, and and I think that that's they're at 13. I was going to say I think the Jags can realistically win 10, 11 games, but Houston's probably going to win 13 games. I think. Oh my gosh, I I know now. I mean, he's yeah. he's legit. He's a fan. We could sit yeah. here and talk football all day, but I don't want to do that. To yeah, <laughs> I, I think Houston's got a much more difficult schedule, but they also got Diggs. They also got 
Daniel Hunter now, and, yeah. and they got C.J. Stroud, and they're yeah. They're gonna face my what happened to my beloved Bengals. My beloved Bengals made it to the Super Bowl on a let's say a medium level schedule. Right. But then when you get to the AFC Championship a couple of years in a row, right. That schedule gets harder when they lay it out the next yeah. year, and all of a sudden that's a little bit more of a steeper hill to climb. Yeah. To try to get back there. Yeah, so. you got a, a definitely more favorable schedule this year. We oh the Jags lucked out not making it to the playoffs because yeah we're we're playing a lot more easier easy teams I think. The Jaguars will always. Be be far part of one of my all-time favorite Monday night football games because I think they they scheduled a Monday night football game one year it was a few years back where it was the Jaguars and the Browns and both of them were just piss poor awful yeah, that yeah, year yeah. and the game was so bad that Mike Tirico and John Gruden were making smoothies on the air during the broadcast. <laughs> Sounds and it will about always right. be one of my favorite were Monday they, Night Football games. Were they brown smoothies? I don't know. <laughs> they were just like, oh, Tirico, you got to get a hit off this. I put lemon in this one. And they were just yeah. like going back and forth. And I'm like, that's awesome. That itself is more entertaining than this game is. And I feel bad because they schedule those games based on this past year's season. And you always get a couple of those teams that are tanking the next year. And then they lay that game out there. And you're like, what do you do? You know who's <laughs> not going to tank? Joe Burrow when he's playing. Thank you. Yeah, dude, he's he's <laughs> one of my favorite QBs. I, I like Josh Allen too, but Joe Burrow has proven, hey man, I can do this. All right, if, we're only, done here. if only my Cowboys <laughs> Dak Prescott. Oh, he's not clutch. the guy. Dude. He's not he's, the guy. He's dude. great all regular season, but I, I was, you get to the playoffs, and although you can't blame him for giving up forty nine points yeah. to the Packers, that was not his fault. I always ah, said, come on now, come on, you can't blame him for I that. I always said that the Cowboys have been mathematically eliminated <laughs> memes before the all season. Right, all right, yeah, 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 okay, all right. Well, why don't you win one ring? All yeah. right, let's go. <laughs> this, I knew that as soon as we started talking football, I knew this was never going to end. All right, uh, so we'll go ahead and get, get one final question. Uh, nothing to do with music, but we always ask, this is a great question, what is your favorite dessert? Oh, man. Um, that's tough because... I got sober in 2018, uh -huh. and when I got sober, you know, when I would drink all the time, I would never eat sweets. Uh -huh. but, but as soon as I stopped drinking, yeah. I wanted sweets, dude. Yeah. I wanted like, yeah. you know, baking cookies with my kids. Yeah, when you're drinking, I turned you want into a, a you professional want a baker. Dude. You want a burger and fries when you're drinking, but right, you right, know, yeah. But but for some reason, the sugar, man, I started like latching onto like a lot of like sweets. So I, I'm a I'm a sweet master. Um, I would say. <laughs> oh, nothing bunt cakes. They have a lemon no, okay. they have a lemon one that is yeah. really, really uh, good. Right. Yeah, 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 it is. I've had it. Yeah, yes. that's good. All right. Um man, when, whenever Cold Stone has their uh blueberry muffin batter. Oh dude. Oh that's, he's gone. You got him. Yeah. Got him. <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah. Uh and then I like Roos Chris has a, a the best cheesecake I've ever had. Okay. Oh, okay. All, All right. right. That's I haven't cakes, experienced that one. Ruth Chris has the best one. Okay. Yeah. Fair well, enough. Hey, thanks so much, Bobby, for yeah, taking the time. For best sure. of luck in everything with the band going forward. Best of luck to your daughter. It sounds Thank like you. she's going to be amazing. I cannot wait to see how yeah. that goes. But Thank you, that's, guys. That's got to be fun watching her while you're doing your thing. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. So, But thank you so much. Yeah, man. Absolutely.